Random thought. Mm -hmm. Once again, is love truly blind? Uh, actually, I think it is. And in some cases, lacks common sense. <laughs> <laughs> Might be right. Hey, welcome to the show. I'm Yanni Root. And I'm just Terrell. You ever been out swearing over her two people having crazy conversations? Well, we are those people, and we've been having these conversations since college. Yep, it's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast, episode 127, Love is Blind, season four, recap of episodes one through five. Be sure to like, subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Now, here we are, season four, Love is Blind, like you said, episodes one through five, and um, before we get into it, because a lot happened in these first five episodes, as usually does um because we got to meet everybody see where the connections are and all that good stuff but overall thought as every season they tend they try to answer the question is love truly blind uh thoughts on this besides the fact that you know they wanted to diversify and got a white woman named micah and a black man named brent <laughs> <laughs> you know um out of all the shows that we do mm -hmm. I'm still not a fan of reality shows, but I like this one the most, mainly because of the concept of you're meeting a stranger, not focused on looks and all that. In the conventional dating world, everyone's right. swiping right and left over tedious stuff. You're really getting to know somebody. This season, uh, it seemed like they had a much better focus on the main characters and didn't give you a lot of fluff from some of that. the other ones. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I think they did a good job of really showing how much time these people are actually spending in the pots of why they're connecting so well with each other. Where I think the previous seasons, I was always curious, like, wow, y'all three dates mm -hmm. and this is the one? That's weird. Yeah, they definitely showed a lot more of that. And it, it's, it was almost like a very conscious effort to focus on the people and the decisions being made in that. Um, and, and as we're int being introduced to these folks, one of the first things that stood out was um, Kwame. Um, and the fact that he said, you know, he couldn't pick up in high school, he couldn't pick up his girlfriend because he is black which let me know he was definitely picking up a white woman, a uh, white girl. And then, uh, you know, he said he even thought of using in the past the name Alex. Let me guess, because he didn't want them to know you were black either. All right, come on. Uh, here we are. Is this SK 2.0? It is. And that's that annoys me. I mean, I'm a big believer. You date whoever you want to date. Who mm -hmm. cares? But don't come out with this BS of, you know, I don't want people to judge me. Da, da, da. Your name's Kwame. You're black. Just be who you are. Right. And if someone in the pod likes you, they're going to like you. But this whole thing about, you know, people look at me and they judge me because I'm black thing. I'm like, I get tired of hearing that song and dance. Just say well, you like white women and that's all you yeah. want to go for. Fine. You could totally do that. But don't come at us with this cockamamie story that he had. Exactly. I will say two people that they did bring up that um, didn't make it through anything else. And we knew they weren't the minute we saw them was Chris who told the story of uh, bleeding, having nosebleeds while making out with a girl and bleeding out on that girl. And then Billy, who uh, we knew why he was single when he said he likes to wear leopard print. And then he asked Bliss if she murdered anyone when she told him that she was from Alaska. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is why you didn't get much airtime and this is why you're single. <laughs> so instead, we're going to focus like they did on the couples that were that were there that proposed and said yes and actually met and went to Mexico we're going to focus on those and also the other strong connections involved so let's start off with the first couple that um actually said yes I will Tiffany and Brett I like these two from the very beginning the minute I saw them I'm like you know what there's that couple there's always that one couple and you know like that's them same uh, I was I was really excited about both of them and what I liked about Brett, because you see these shows, you got some of those dudes that are all big and mm -hmm. kind of roidish, roid ragey. Yeah. I don't get that vibe from him at all. He just seems like a genuine person. And what I like about their connection is she said he's someone that she wouldn't have gone for right. in the conventional world because he didn't have a degree. Exactly. And how like immediately that would have just shut her off from getting to know mm -hmm. all the great things about him. And he's able to show her, hey, I can do some amazing things. Yes, I didn't go to college, but yep. look at everything that I've done. So I'm rooting for this couple. I really liked them. Um, you know, he shared this heartbreaking story of his older brother that made him aware of his mortality and that, you know, here's where it is. And then, you know, um, Tiffany then tells 
Brett that she's falling in love with him. Then he bears his heart and she falls asleep on him. <laughs> I, yo, his reaction, <laughs> I totally understand. Because she wasn't snoring by that point. She wasn't deep right. in sleep yet. So she wasn't snoring. So he couldn't even tell her, oh, she fell asleep. I'm mad that she fell asleep. He was like, she just shut down. Did she just leave? The, did she leave the room on me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it reminded me of? Remember back in high school, you'd be on the phone with someone and yes. I don't want to go to sleep, you know, just, and you just go to sleep with each other on the phone. Yes. And then you wake up. <clears throat> Good morning. That's what that reminded me of, that she just totally passed out on that dude. And I don't blame him. I'd have felt some kind of way. I can't believe I just said that. I'd have felt bothered. By... <laughs> you really did just say it. you felt some I kind did. Of way. I did. I can't believe I said that. But I would have felt bothered by that, mm -hmm. too, because he doesn't know if she walked out the room and he's just bearing his soul. So I'm glad that she was able to redeem herself. She was. The but next think day. about this. Her girls came in, woke her up. They all singing, dancing. And she realized, wait a minute, is he still over there? <laughs> she realized what happened. I mean, she came back so apologetic. It looked like he wasn't going to accept her apology at first. Like he was going to be like, you know what? F this, I'm done. But no, he um, he manned up. And, and I, th I think this was very important for him to man up and like, you know, realize mistakes do happen. And then he proposed. True. The, the one thing I don't like that mm -hmm. Tiffany did I don't look at it as a compliment to say that my voice is so soothing it puts you to sleep. I just don't see that <laughs> she as... She did say that, didn't she? I don't see that as a positive. I'm like, girl, man, she likes the hell out of me. And when I talk to her, boy, she gets to snoring like no one's business. Like, I just don't see that as a sexy compliment. I wouldn't want to hear that, Terrell. Your voice just makes me want to fall asleep. <laughs> no, well, that's, she didn't say it makes her want to fall asleep. Oh. It's just soothing. It just it's soothing. It puts to her sleep. to sleep. Yeah. Well, yeah. This, okay, same thing. <laughs> Yeah, you know it was kind of cute that they showed up um, on one of the dates wearing the exact same color, but that was pretty um, cool. And before they got to meet, after the proposal, they get to meet the next day, and um, she said she didn't care what he looked like. Right? Um, my question was, as we see him getting ready, but is she gonna change her mind when she sees that shiny jacket, or if not the jacket, once the doors opened and they started, they were walking towards each other, he started that trot of like. Oh boy, she, she might stop and turn around now, <laughs> but she didn't. <laughs> yeah, no, I had all the confidence that their meeting was going to be exactly what we saw. I mean, right. I thought like this is this is what this experiment is for, and it seems yes. like every every time we do this show, mm -hmm. there's that one couple like, okay, this is what the experiment is for, yes. and you're like, I see it, and I see that with Brett and Tiffany. And we see them take theirs on a whole nother level when they get to Mexico. But before we get to Mexico, we got to get to some of the other couples that were actually formed. And some of those include couples that didn't actually form. But, um, you know, the connections are really strong, like Amber and Paul. And mm -hmm. Amber had been married twice before when she dropped that bombshell. And then she accidentally dropped it in, in the pod. And I was like, wait a minute. Did she did she mean to say that? <laughs> I... I I wish that we saw more of her because I have questions. Okay. I bet you do. Like so what, what, what husband happened? was black? <laughs> what happened? What happened? You had you're 34 and been mm -hmm. married and divorced twice. Okay. What is going on with that and, and oh, why? There's, there should be no judgment on that. She takes relationships serious. How many people, 24, have had multiple relationships? There's a difference of a full marriage and making it legal. I'm trying to, I'm trying to help. One time here. I get it. Hey, I made a mistake. Two times. I'm just like, you, you're a bad decision maker. Okay. Your, your picker is really bad, but you make bad decisions. <laughs> Jennifer, Jennifer Lopez got married a number that, of times. You can't compare her to Jennifer Lopez. Good point. Actors, <laughs> celebrities. It's a total different ball game for that. She's no JLo. So let me just stop you right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's, let's move on to something that's even better. Paul and Amber, had a conversation on cheating, right? When she brought up her previous, her ex-husband who um, who cheated right after they got married. And this that conversation alone, listening to that conversation is exactly why I don't answer hypothetical questions, right? Because he asked her a question. And when she gave her answer, he took it and ran with it. Even after she told him that immediately after, immediately after they got married, her ex cheated on her. She left before it got to the point that she would even think about cheating. Because she goes, if I stayed, it would eventually have led to that. Like, right. Hypothetically. 
And what did he do? He went on on a whole nother. Oh, so you're a cheater. You're going to cheat. You cheat on me. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, dude. Are you even listening? Now I understand what women talk about when they say guys don't listen. But women are the same way. If a woman can Touché. meet a guy and he says he's cheated before, automatically, ugh. Yes. You're a cheater without all the context. But when a woman does it, it's like, well, you don't understand. See, what had happened was, <laughs> and they get the pass on it. I'm like, okay, yeah. you, you, you cheated in your past. Great. Just don't cheat on me. And and we're good. And vice versa, right? I I, I think that was lame on his part to have done that. It but was. maybe it's because he wasn't feeling her as strongly as... Okay, here's the thing picked. about that. I see what you're going with. That Maybe that's why. I don't think so. Um, unless it's just that he just doesn't have enough testosterone because he was having a really hard time breaking up with Amber. A really hard time breaking up with Amber. And... My thought was, if it's that hard, yeah, then is it the right decision to break up with her? Right, exactly. I made that note too. If it's if it is affecting you emotionally this much, mm-hmm. maybe you are making a mistake. Yes, you know, if you ever had to break, I mean, it's to me, it seems more common sense, right? If I'm feeling this certain way and I'm thinking about ending it, and it's just mm-hmm. so emotionally hard. There's one thing. It's like it's hard to break up with somebody. You don't want to hurt them. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that was the case. He truly felt something for her. And so exactly. I'm hoping he didn't make a mistake, but I did make that note. I liked her reaction, though, because she was like, um, you know, I'm not going to wish you well. I'm just going to say good luck and fuck you, Paul. <laughs> Damn straight. Say, hey, you break up with me. Yeah, I'm not wishing you well at all. <laughs> I'm not wishing you well whatsoever. I hope every five minutes you feel like you got to pee, but you don't. I hope that happens to you. <laughs> uh, well, you know, the in, the interesting thing about uh, about this whole thing with Paul and Amber and why he had to break up with Amber was because of his relationship with Micah, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was actually a very good line early on when he told Micah, her voice tickles his brain. <laughs> Her voice annoys me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's what he meant, but I understand yeah. what you're saying. <laughs> Her voice annoys me. And it may be, you know, if you, when he had mentioned the type of girls he's dated in the past, and so normally like the, the grunge hippie types where they make their own <laughs> yeah. kombucha and their herb garden. I thought of you when he said that, by the way. They probably smell like patchouli. Yeah, you that's know. exactly what I thought of. Exactly what I was thinking when he said they're like witches <laughs> and their potions. I'm like, oh, so girls that wear patchouli. That's your that's your jam. Yeah. And, you know, Micah is that category of women that as a probably as a science nerd growing up, he was always attracted to, but could never pull. Right. And so I think that as he probably learned kind of what she looked like, I'm sure they described themselves somewhat Mm -hmm. um, in those pods. He was just really infatuated by that. But if if her voice does it for him, great. It doesn't do it for me at all. Yeah, I mean, it's like nails on a chalkboard. But, you know, some people like that, you know. Because I was like, (laughs) and then, you know, and I'm just like, and I'm just like, she talks just like that. Yeah. And that is what annoys me. Not even so much the tone of voice. It's the, and I was like, and I'm like, maybe it's like, I can't stand that. I, I'm right there with you, man. Um, well, Micah herself didn't like, speaking of things that you like and didn't like, she didn't like to hear Amber saying that she liked being with Paul. She didn't like when Amber brought back the flowers that Paul had given her. And it kind of just showed the kind of person that mm-hmm. um, that Micah was, right? Um, and, and the thing I didn't like, I didn't think it was fair. And I think it says a lot about her. And I noticed two people did this. She's one, and we'll get to the other one later. But she asked him, about what he thought about Amber. Because she has multiple connections too, right? Why are you asking about the other person? Right. Because she could be messy. Mm -hmm. Because she's a mean girl. And he fell for the okie doke because he's the nerd and he fell for the okie doke. Yeah, she's the mean girl. And she's just getting intel Mm -hmm. to to play her game. It's yeah. like all the stuff you the the mean girls that we knew in high school. Yes, she's that one. I would even put her as like the captain of the cheer squad. She's yep. like the captain captain of the drill team mm-hmm. that thinks she's big shit, but she's yeah. not because it's just the drill team. You're not leading the cheerleaders, mm-hmm. you know. But I just don't like her. Um, but again, he fell for it, hook, line, and sinker, and and she used all that information to be messy in the women's uh, quarters. Yeah, she was so messy, man, that even when she 
you know, they had the conversation about, okay, well, I'll break up with this other person that I'm seeing, you break up with Amber, um, and she's so evil. And mm -hmm. I'm just gonna use the word evil because that's that's really how I felt watching her, right? Um, mm -hmm. That she wanted um, her partner in crime, her BFF, her fellow mean girl, um, Irina, I had to, had to remember how to pronounce her name. She wanted to eavesdrop on Amber's conversation with Chelsea and mm -hmm. was getting the joy out of Amber's pain. I'm just mm -hmm. like, yo, really? Yeah, laughing about it, having a ball about it. That's just evil people, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't wish ill will on people. There's people I don't like, but just because I don't want you to eat at my table doesn't mean I don't want you to eat, right? Yeah. You're in a competition. You're in this deal. To, everybody's going through the same thing. Be nice. Yeah. To, it costs nothing, you know, to be nice. And they were just mean for, for no reason. And you can just tell that they're just going to be messy people. That's just exactly. who they are. Yeah. They would have, if, if they were unready to love, they would have been there the entire time because you needed that kind of drama. <laughs> no, they'd have, they'd have got, they'd be fighting on ready to love. I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, I'm just saying. It's different. Just saying. <laughs> you know, here's the thing though. So, they get rid of the other people they're seeing and they decide, you know, uh, uh, Paul proposes to Micah. So we have our second couple, right? Yeah. But did you notice that Paul was kind of worried about what Micah looks like? Did he even believe that this is love? Because remember, this is supposed to be love is blind, not love is, you know, uh, you know, a guessing game until we figure out what you really look like. No, I think he's a scientist. He's just thinking, okay. overthinking a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. you know, so. And I think he was also concerned that she got to like me. Mm hmm. You know, so because he's not like this dude that just, you know, lands chicks everywhere. If he is, yeah, he probably wouldn't be on the show. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Here's one thing I did like, though, and we're going to get to more of Kwame later on. But I like how Kwame was man enough to go up and congratulate Paul um, after he walked in and said he had proposed. Kwame actually went up and proposed to I mean, not proposed to him. Jesus Christ. Congratulated him. <laughs> and, uh, you know. If, if if he really knew what he knew, if he knew better, he would have probably thanked him for getting her off his hands. Um, but apparently, Kwame is just a bigger fool, as we'll find out later on mm -hmm. as we go through the rest of the show. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Now, our third couple, which was actually a thruple, really and truly, when it got down to it, involved Jacqueline, Marshall, a.k.a. Uh, Lil Bow Wow All Grown Up, a.k.a. Shad Moss, um, and Josh, who mm -hmm. was the software engineer. Um, and as uh, Jacqueline said at one point, you know, Evander Field or Mike Tyson, who are you going to go with? <laughs> I couldn't believe yeah, Jackie said that. <laughs> that. That group, because you don't really get a whole lot from Josh, mm -hmm. so they didn't really, producers didn't put a whole lot right. out there. That was just something in in their head. And Jackie's a beautiful girl, but she's not my type because I feel like she comes with drama. And I think as we see, there's mm -hmm. going to be some drama. But Marshall, I was trying to figure him out because at first, like, I'm out. I like this guy. He seems mm -hmm. pretty, pretty solid. And then I'm like, wow, this dude is, he's in touch with his feelings mm -hmm. and he's very emotional, which, okay, great. Nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But then for him to all of a sudden flip and be ready to fight Josh yeah. and be that pissed, I'm like, mm -hmm. where does this angry stuff come from? Mm -hmm. And you don't look like a big dude that's going to whoop some ass. Yeah. You know, so like, why are you storming back to the, the guy's quarters like you're about to do something yeah all because he said look and, and here's the thing about it i was kind of confused with that too because josh didn't say anything wrong he literally no. said if you if you don't pick me i'm packing my bags i'm leaving because he was just bearing his soul you are my one right and if it's not you it's no one i'm leaving that's right. not how many women, I mean, ladies, you tell us below if, 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 if that's uh, in, in the comment section, if, if that's wrong for a guy to say. I mean, he's laying all his cards on the table. Yeah, I saw nothing wrong with it. And I respect that Josh was like, hey, Marshall, are you talking about me? Yes. <laughs> I'm right here. We can talk about it. Mm -hmm. Instead of Marshall just being his little baby, mm -hmm. you know. And for Jackie, what I don't like about how she handled it. She was supposed to go end it, but mm -hmm. the fact that he said all that, she's like, oh, I'm going to hurt him, and I just felt so bad, and I shut down. I'm like, "Yeah, no, stop it. You're an adult. Exactly. Be, be an adult and end it like you're supposed to. You know, the, the thing I did like was the conversation they had around kids and raising kids, though, right? Mm -hmm. um, Jackie and, and Marshall, when Jackie's like, she doesn't want to be hard on kids because she doesn't um, want to 
she says that her parents were really strict with her. And she doesn't think that that worked, right? And then Marshall shares his fears. And again, you talk about him being, in, you know, in touch with his feelings. It's part of it. We talk about his dad and how mm-hmm. what his dad said to him and his siblings, how it made them feel, and especially, specifically how it made him feel. Um, I will say, the one thing I like about this couple be- came out of that. The main thing I like about this, because at that point, after hearing that story, knowing that she's on this side, and he says, I'm afraid I'm going to be like my dad, instead of going, well, ain't no way we can have kids, because if you do this, instead of being combative, what does she do? She said, she listened first, right? Mm -hmm. And then she was compassionate, and Mm -hmm. still found a humor in it to change the mood, mood, and then she was supportive, like, no, you won't be like that. And I I thought that was, that was an interesting... um, a chain of events that they had there in, in that, because I think it really set set up and set the foundation for them anyway. Yeah, it did, but I'm not convinced because Jackie <laughs> looks like the type that she's going to pull off the chancla and hit their, hit her kid with it. Uh, it's just, I, she just has that, that appeal to her. I think that she's going to be someone going to take the flip flop and go upside a kid's head. If she has to. <laughs> Well, besides your thought on that, Marshall thought different. And, well, he probably was like, well, you know, that's what my daddy would have done. So that's fine, too. Mm-hmm. He got down on one knee. He proposed. And now we have our third couple. When they meet, Jackie says what? I, If we had met somewhere else, probably wouldn't have been. Because he's shorter than what I normally would have dated. Yeah, because she normally goes with the guys with the full tattoos and mm-hmm. and all that. I'm like, yeah, great. And Marshall is so smitten with her. Yes. And how she looks, right? And I think if 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 you're someone who's blessed to be a good looking person and you date guys who get good looking women all the time, they're not gonna treat you like a rare flower. Right. But you get that guy who's not used to getting that caliber of a woman. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's gonna be madly in love with you, and I feel like that's what Marshall is like. Like he maybe doesn't get the Jackies of the world. He gets close, but I don't think he gets the Jackies, and so he's just <laughs> smitten with her. And I, I think it's great um, for both of them. And I'm excited to see where where their journey goes. Indeed, you know we got to cover this couple just because they. Um... Even though Micah's already taken, she's already been proposed to. We've already covered her. There was a second couple, but Micah and Kwame, mm-hmm. fireworks, joy, security, all the things that uh, Kwame said he would bring to Micah, and he validated uh, Micah's feelings. She said she's never given the nice guy, as you just talked about nice guys. Uh, she said she's never given a nice guy a chance before, mm-hmm. and she didn't again because she didn't give Kwame a chance, as we already know. <laughs> But I don't know, you know, if I'm uh, the jury is still out on me and uh, for me on how I feel about Kwame, because mm-hmm. when he first comes on to the scene, I, I liked his energy. Um, interesting story. But mm-hmm. the more I hear him, it's like he's a salesman mm-hmm. and there's just a lot of bullshit that's coming out of his <laughs> mouth. And it, it's just I, I haven't quite figured him out yet, but for the connection what he needed from Micah, he wasn't getting. And he's still bothered by that. But she wasn't She wasn't reaffirming to you that you're my one. Did right. it, did all the different things that his person actually was doing, yeah. she wouldn't do. And yet that bothered him so much. And so I look at Micah just kind of like, mm, I don't know. It's, it's that piece. You can't get it. Because think about it. He decided to share with Micah that he's building a strong connection with someone else, right? That's someone else, mm-hmm. as we know, is Chelsea, and we'll talk about their connection in a minute. But um, Micah couldn't understand, well, how is that possible? And then we feel like, okay, well, he's going to say he's going with Chelsea, right? Because tell me if you, you felt the same way. When he says this, and she's like, well, how is it possible? I'm like, okay, well, he's really going to go. Then all of a sudden, he changes directions completely and i'm thinking this is where you you uh you you're in the sense of like you can't get a, a read on him because all of a sudden he's like well i'll pick you over her right now and then what does she do she goes yeah well i'm not ready yet we should but see other people <laughs> <laughs> well before she even says we see all the people she goes but don't you go making a, a decision with somebody else don't you pick somebody else until we you and i talk again so she puts him on that clothesline and hangs him up there and says, stand right there. And he stayed right there. Mm-hmm. Like, Kwame, That's, how weak is that? that? That is weak on his part. 
and I, I don't I don't see what he sees in Micah. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't in the pod, so I don't know. But I do think that if she's not straight up telling you the things you need to hear, if words of affirmation is your love language, right. and you're not getting it from her, but you're getting it from Chelsea, mm-hmm. then that's your answer. That's who you need to go with. Remember, I said Micah is, um, is, e- uh, is evil. Um, she made this man hold out for her and hold up his connection with somebody else. And then dropped him like a <laughs> like a hot potato, man. Even though I do like how he handled it, My, uh, Kwame handled it like an exit interview. Uh, he was like, uh, you know, all right, cool, all right, yep, all right, yeah, deuces, I'm out. I wish you luck in all your future endeavors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but then, as soon as he got out of there, he's talking in, in the confessions like, "That's kind of fucked up. I can't be the only one who thinks that way, right?" <laughs> well, I, I was like, okay, and and this is this is what's interesting about this show. That that I think I've I've learned more about this season. You got to figure that all they're doing is just mm-hmm. dating. Yeah. They don't go to work. Right. They don't have internet, social media. Mm-hmm. They don't have anything else. So all they're doing is just focused on these people. And I think that's why the emotions get so high. So now I'm like, okay, I give them a pass for being hurt. But dude, you're a little way too hurt. Yeah. Over this deal with Micah. Um, when you got Chelsea, like to me, it's like you're, if you got two connections, Mm -hmm. you could go with one or the other. Right. And then one doesn't choose you anymore. Okay. Hey, great. Wish you luck. Now it makes it easier for me to focus on this one. Exactly. Win, win for everybody. That's giving you the words of affirmation that you need. Yeah. Then, then for me to be all crying and, you know, I I just don't get, that's what makes me weird about Kwame. Cause I'm like, you're, you're an athlete, you're competitive, there's something there that I just don't know yet, but and we see some of it later when we get to Mexico. But you know, one of the things you talked about um, was Josh didn't get a lot of camera time. But one of the great things he did was he gave great advice to Kwame. He told him, you know, don't let what Micah did affect your other connections. Right. Which is how we got our fourth couple, Chelsea and Kwame. Um, Chelsea very early on did not trust Micah and I understand why considering what Micah did um, with Paul and Amber um, mm-hmm. and, and even when you, you see what happens later you see with, uh, with Kwame she tells Kwame well don't tell anybody what we talk about then immediately she goes to women's quarters and tells somebody what they talked about right Right. Uh, <laughs> but I also like what Chelsea said but she's like you know Kwame speaks to my heart my head and my vagina <laughs> uh I, I like them as a couple. I like Chelsea, mm-hmm. and I, I think she's attractive, but what I like more about her is her personality mm-hmm. and the fact that she's kind of like a not going to take any shit right. kind of person, and I just she's like women like that. Yeah, she's not too much of an alpha, though. Right. Because there's certain alpha females, and I'm just like, no way in hell. Mm-hmm. But there's something about her energy that I like and I think could be good for for Kwame. Mm-hmm. Um I felt that she was really patient with the whole meltdown he had with Micah um, and, and all that. The one thing I don't like is why did Kwame decide to break out a guitar and sing a song? Stop that. Yeah. Don't, don't ever do that again, Kwame. Stop <sighs> it. And I wonder, like, was she crying because she's like, oh, this is painful and the camera's <laughs> on me. Look, I know I'm tone deaf, but uh, Kwame, def- he's a better songwriter than he is a performer. I'll tell yeah, you that much. <laughs> I was like, goodness. What did you think of, of them talking about their souls, their soul touching conversation about sex? Whatever. I, I didn't really have anything. I didn't really have anything, you know, big on that. Uh-huh. Um, and I think they talk about all types of stuff, you know, yeah. in the pods. But whatever they talked about was enough for Chelsea to be sold. Mm-hmm. Um on him and for him to be sold on her. It's almost reminds me, it's going to sound bad. Uh-oh. When I look at them, I think of uh, Ann Coulter and Jimmy Walker. Remember how <laughs> they used to date? <laughs> That's what I think of about these two for some reason. Like they're just oh, younger versions of Ann Coulter and Jimmy Walker. <laughs> you know what I like? About now you after- can't unsee it either. I can't. Yeah, I really can't. You're right. Uh, you know, he proposes, not sure which needs the right one. She's like, pick one. It doesn't matter. Um, and what I like is Chelsea says something that's very, what I like about it, she's very pragmatic, right? She's very, she, she's very realistic about the things that she's, about her thought process and everything. She goes, I'm confident in how I look, but am I his type? 
Right. Great question. Because it's real, because beauty, as we know, is indeed in the eye of the beholder. Right. True. And I like what she said to follow that up. She goes, well, if I'm not his type, well, he's going to have to get used to that. <laughs> um, because she was all in. Yeah. Regardless. And so, which is great about this experiment, right? That mm-hmm. you're not like, hey, I'm mad, madly in love with this person. But if those doors open and I'm not attracted, I'm out. Yeah. You know, so she didn't have that mentality. And so exactly. uh, I was excited for those two to to meet. And I think you can see the the spark and the energy between them when they had their first hug and first kiss and all that. So I was like, right on, Kwame. You got souls were definitely making out when they met. (laughs) You know, first thing I thought was like their souls are making out. Then the second thought was they're going to be the first ones to do it. Um, And they might even do it on the plane on the way to Mexico. And uh Chelsea's so invested. She had all his names, including his fake name. Mm-hmm. To every every name, all his names, first, middle, last. Um, and I'm assuming she pronounced it properly too. So, yeah, she's all in, and I think that's what you got to be in this process. You're either all in or you're not. So I like that Chelsea is all in before she even saw what Kwame looked like. She's like, "Yep, I'm all in. We're doing this." Yeah, you know, Bliss and Zach. Um, Interesting how this is going to kind of roll through as we get through this this recap of episodes one through five. But it's funny that um, Irina asked Bliss about sabotaging her love life because it seemed like from the very beginning, Bliss and Zach had a connection. Mm -hmm. Irina thought that was her connection and here we go. Um, And I thought thought it was wild that his favorite song, which is the song his mom played for him, is the same song that Bliss's mom is her song for her. And mm-hmm. I thought, I, I saw them like, oh, this is easy. These two are going to, oh, they didn't. What happened? <laughs> yeah. At first, when Zach first came out, I was annoyed because he was mainly making jokes. I'm a stripper. Mm-hmm. And honestly, at first, I'm like, maybe this dude really is a stripper. Mm-hmm. And the story that, you know, with his mom being a stripper and how he was raised, I think he needs some counseling to be able to get over that because he's, your mom did a phenomenal job. Yeah. Look how you turned out. Mm-hmm. You, she did a phenomenal job. I know I've known some people who had kids that were strippers, and I'm like, those kids are screwed. They have no <laughs> shot. Um, but her, his mom did a phenomenal job, and so for that to be something in his in the back of his mind, I just think is is weird. I think his connection with Bliss was was great. I, I just I, I didn't understand why he wouldn't listen to her in the sense that she's trying to say, hey, I'm around this other connection that you have. Mm-hmm. Here's what we're seeing in person. Yes. He didn't listen at all. Listen to what we're trying to tell you about this person. And he just wasn't wasn't having it. His soul was telling him because, you know, when he went to break it off with Bliss, he's crying mm-hmm. because he's breaking up with her. Look, if you're crying because you're breaking up with somebody, just know you probably made the wrong choice. Um, Mm -hmm. What I did like was how Bliss walked off with dignity and was just like, all right, you know, because we're not going to do this. I'm I'm, I'm not going to let you off the hook. This is what it is. And I just got to point this out. This nasty mop, Zach, goes back in the men's lounge, crying his ass off, curls up on the couch that everybody sits on. But he puts his nasty ass shoes all over that damn couch too. Oh Jesus! That's, <laughs> anyone that would have noticed that, that's you. <laughs> if everything that was happening in the show, that's the thing that you notice. I you did. need some help. I did see that. <laughs> well, you need some help. Irene and Zach, the last couple. Um, interesting things about them with him like you said about his stripper mom she's a russian immigrant um and as soon as she said it i realized that you know you can see it in her facial features right but she's really insecure and you see that throughout this entire time that she's there with him she and you can tell that her and mike are like best besties because they use the same mean girl tactics Mm -hmm. to kind of bully their way into these relationships Mm -hmm. yeah um so irena is, is just very shady Mm-hmm. Right. I, I put her in that messy category. Um, she was feeding Zach crap about how special she thinks birthdays are, even though she forgot his birthday mm-hmm. and only realized it when Bliss was making him cupcakes. Right. And was like, well, can I have one of your candles? <laughs> like, Yo. no, you can't have any part of the gift that I'm getting for this man. You can't do anything about that. Um, and then for Zach to think that 
she's a thoughtful and caring person. I'm like, no, she's not, because she's trying to tell you why she's better than Bliss. Yes. And all that, the way it comes out is shady. And mm. the other thing I don't like about Irina, she's someone that has some insecurities about her looks because of her bad acne as a kid. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's, you know, when you look at the size of a lot of the other women there, I mean, she's not, she's not a 10 mm. uh, out of all the women that's on the show. But the way that she treats him when they meet and yeah. she's not attracted to him, I'm like, the purpose of this experiment is to connect with somebody mm-hmm. outside of looks. What your issue is you've been rejected a lot for your looks. Mm-hmm. This is a dude who proposed to you sight unseen. Right. And this is how you act? Ugh, I don't like her. Not Well, I didn't like her before she even met him. So, you know, all of the sneaky, <laughs> manipulative, all that stuff. I mean, put it like this. If someone asks you what's the difference between them and the other person that you're seeing or have seen, run. Mm-hmm. That person is up to no good and it's it's never worked out well, okay? It's a red flags. He saw them over and over again, refused to run. Instead, he decided, I trust her. I trust her. <sighs> and apparently he trusts himself too. Why did he say Hmm? why did he sing yeah that song was like wow why are you doing this this was I mean I wanted to fast forward so I'm like this is unpainful this is painful for me (laughs) you ever get embarrassed for somebody on TV and you're like I gotta walk out the room for a second (laughs) I feel bad for you right now that you're doing this in front of yeah I, I just can't deal with it please don't ever sing again just stop it it's also how I felt when they met, you know, because like you said, she wasn't attracted to him, but they both looked so uncomfortable and they lack chemistry. Um, only couple that didn't kiss. Right. There was nothing there. And after that, we get on planes and we head to Mexico. Well, Zach was creepy to me. Like, he just kept staring at her. Mm-hmm. And she kept saying, like, would you blink or whatever? And it, to me, it gave me that Dahmer vibe. I'm like, dude, what is your deal? Stop mm-hmm. staring at this person like that because it looks creepy. It does. And so I agree with her when she was like, it's kind of creepy. But he doesn't, and he, there's just something about Zach that just gives him this creepier, this creeper vibe throughout well, the whole thing. That All five episodes are just something about him. I'm just like, I mean, I like him, mm-hmm. but there's something about, like, if it came out in the news that there was bodies in the trunk or he had a, a deep freeze in the, in the garage, bodies, and I'd be like, that's what it is. Knew it. <laughs> While we're here on Creepy Zach, and um, judgy, mean girl, um, Irina, let's go ahead and stay here. In Mexico, it's obvious. If, if it wasn't obvious before when they first met, it's obvious now they don't like each other. She says um, that he reminds her of a, car- of a cartoon Two character. Cartoon character. He says, which one? She goes, a fictional character. <laughs> yeah, not the real cartoon characters, but the fictional ones, the fake ones. <laughs> That alone should have been like, you know what, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. That would have yeah, been enough reason. Why would you ever tell someone that you look like a cartoon character? <laughs> there, that is not a compliment to anybody. Okay. Ever. Two things here that I noticed, right? One, the forehead kiss moved from married at first sight over to love is blind, as he saw that. But then the next morning, they wake up, right? And Irina says, I woke up this morning, I saw you, and I went, oh, not this again. When she sees him, that tells me a whole lot. And it should really make him feel like shit because he picked this worm booger, right? And um, over Bliss. And she refused to even touch him. Yet mm-hmm. she alludes to one night stands the very next morning, like it's the norm for her. Like it's something she's done so many times. She's like, oh my God, not again. He should feel like shit. He does. And I think he recognized it early on. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact that he was observant and watching her in Mexico and paying attention to it. And then got to the point to say, hey, look, if I don't see an improvement in this, we just call it quits. Yes. And we could just move on and go Mm -hmm. our separate ways. So I loved how he owned that conversation. Mm -hmm. But he he wasn't just going in this blind and, and just smitten by her. Yeah. He's recognizing she doesn't want to touch him. Mm-hmm. And she just has to be honest with herself and say, I'm not attracted to him. Yeah. She really- Which I find weird. But I, I agree with Zach to say, okay, all that crap you said about me in the pod, mm-hmm. 
So now all of a sudden you can't even touch me. Mm -hmm. It's BS. Exactly. And she's like, well, you know, we feel like best friends. Yeah, he he definitely messed up. Um, These two definitely weren't on best friend terms. Chelsea and Kwame, their connection immediately. The strongest when they got to Mexico, right? So mm-hmm. this is all before this is all before we get to the couples meeting up as just seeing their first in, initial spending time with each other, and I like that they did this. I like they didn't let them meet the first day. Let everybody meet right. the first day. Let them have a day or two by themselves first. Get to know each other a little bit. See if they actually have any chemistry first, right? And right. these two definitely had chemistry. Um, I'm still not sure how I feel about the Baba that she sleeps with every night. Still, yeah. Who cares? No biggie. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do That's like the fact like that. Well, I like the fact that they slept together <laughs> first night of the honeymoon. Yeah, I'm like, great. You like it wasn't a honeymoon. They're not married yet. Oh, well, yes, the, their first night. I, I think great because how many people has Chelsea slept with that didn't put a ring on it? So <laughs> at least he's done it. Yeah, you know, and I feel like they have a strong chemistry yes. and connection together that I think it's great. And the note that I made after Watson the first night, I'm like, because I know at some point they're gonna have people meet back up. I'm like, please don't screw this up with Micah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but you know, it was going to be exactly what it was. But before we even got to that, I like that honest and open conversation about life after Mexico. See, here's the thing about, here's what I think I see that you really like about Chelsea. is the fact that she is willing, ready, and able to have these open conversations, these honest, straightforward conversations. And that's what they did immediately. Like, they, okay, what about life after Mexico? Um, all right, what about the interaction with other cast members during the trip. So when we meet up, and I even like the fact that, um, that Kwame asked, do you have a problem if I talk to Micah? Mm-hmm. Um, and she's like, no, because obviously y'all had something there, but apparently she didn't know what she was opening herself for. Um, I do like the fact that she's not afraid to have the conversations, right? And I think that's great. And I thought it said everything when she went, you're all I ever wanted. Right, right. I mean, she puts all up on the table and she's been doing that with him in the pods and she's doing the same thing now that they've met and mm-hmm. they're in Mexico together. So she's being consistent where Kwame, on the other hand, <laughs> um, is is struggling with that. Yeah. And we'll see that as, as we get to that in a little bit. But Mike and Paul, I really didn't get a lot of, out of them when they first got together in, in Mexico. Did you? I mean, besides the fact that he really dis- described his typical girl, which wasn't Micah, but, you know. Yeah, I, I don't really see anything big out of that. I think um, I think Paul is still wondering, did I make a mistake mm-hmm. um, and not pick Amber? But nothing really big about those two mm-hmm. um, in this. I think Paul's been a good friend talking to Zach, you know, while they're there. But that's really it. You don't really see Paul in a mix mm-hmm. of a lot of conversations, unlike Micah. You yeah. Know, so. And we'll see Not more of those there. conversations and we'll get to some of those conversations Paul and Zach had. But um, Jackie and Marshall, what I like is that he asked her. And I, I say I like it, but in the moment when he asked, I was I cringed when he asked if she would have if she wants to wait for sex. Because uh, I thought that was kind of awkward, you know, over breakfast the next day, like, all right, so um, are we going to wait till after we say I do for sex? And she was like, yeah, nah. I mean, so it kind of worked out in his favor because she's like, no, nah, I mean, you don't buy a car without test driving it. I'm like, you go, girl. <laughs> oh, I, I like that, too. And the fact that it, it shows that he has a level of respect for women mm-hmm. and doesn't want to go into this assuming, OK, we're about to knock it down. It's our first right. night in Mexico. So I think that was great. Um, when they went to kind of drive around the city mm-hmm. and uh, they were having brunch or whatever it was, I thought that conversation was good. What totally ruined it for me with these two is what is Jackie crying for and what yes. she's so emotional about that that was all but five minutes of footage. So I know there had to been way more than that of her crying. I'm like, what is the issue with your family? So I was like, going to ask you, did I miss something? Because it, sometimes I may blink and miss a couple of things on the, on the show. So what did I miss? Nothing. She just kept crying okay. and worried about her family. I'm like, I can't wait to hear the story because I don't understand what you're so emotional about right now. And Marshall's better than me because at some point, the way I am, I'd have been like, okay, whatever this crying, whatever you're dealing with, this is a you thing. So I'm going to go to the bar <laughs> and you sure would have. give you some space to let you kind of work through this because I, I'm just not going to sit outside the door. And, and I'm sure maybe she told him, but it's just not on camera yet, or right. the producer didn't let us see it. But I just thought that was so weird. Is what she got all emotional about? 
But part of what she was talking, and, and maybe, you know, I don't know. I'm going to assume this by just uh, piecing things together. You guys tell me if you think the same thing, too. But because she said, you know, she has to take care of her family, to, which tells you the things you see on IG. Because I actually looked at her IG, right? Because when you go through and online, you see uh, everybody's IG. IG shows the Prada, this, that, all this other stuff, all the all the, the designer stuff. There's there's another side to it. Everybody shows their good side on Instagram, right? And mm-hmm. they don't show the bad side. And it just feels like there's a lot there behind all those smiles, behind all those confident looks. There's somebody that's still hurting behind that. But the thing I think that Marshall should really worry about, that's a big red flag. But there's something else she said when they went out to eat. Mm-hmm. Because he is still starry-eyed, right? But she says she's not worried about him. Right. But she's worried about her. And my question is, what do you mean? Because yeah. she's like, I'm worried about me when I go back home. When we go back home, I'm worried about me. Am I going to slip back into my old ways? Okay. Next question, which is what he should have asked. What are those old ways? <laughs> she's for the streets. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. That's, that's what I'm thinking is maybe she's for the streets. <laughs> and we just don't know about it yet. <laughs> now... Other couple, this is the elderly couple on the show, um, <laughs> Tiffany and Brett. <laughs> um, Tiffany was not feeling wild, that wildlife, man, and that raccoon that, that showed up and was just chilling. Yeah, I was like, okay, you got to get over that. Um, <laughs> I've been out to Mexico. You just see some of these things when you're on these resorts. Um, but I laugh when... The next day, they had the raccoon went into their place because they left the door open. Who That's sleeps with point. the door open? <laughs> Who does that dumb shit? First you're of all, in, you're in Mexico. freaking Mexico. <laughs> I'm making sure that door is locked. I, do you not watch the news? Plus, you saw the raccoon outside. Why would yeah. you leave the door open? <laughs> yeah, and snakes, anything. Because I'm like, why would y'all leave a door open? They're and it wasn't like they left the door these. open to go have sex because she yes. said she was on her cycle. Yeah. So she was doing other things. But <laughs> why would you leave the door open to let a raccoon get in y'all's uh, room? I thought that was just crazy. You know, I don't know if you noticed this, but when they were on their little excursion, their outing, uh, not really excursion, but more so just, you know, that little mud bath thing they were doing or the spa. And Tiffany was about to say, not on the hip. And that woman just poured that water all over her hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so don't worry about a black girl. You'll be fine. <laughs> See, <laughs> there's water in there. You'll be fine. Oh my God, hilarious, man. Um, so couples get together, right? Did you find it disrespectful when Jackie was uh, as soon as Brett starts walking? Ooh, Brett is fine. Was that disrespectful? No, because they had talked about it. Because even Marshall was like, yeah, I told you. He's a good looking guy. <laughs> right. You know, so it wasn't like she's like, ooh, he's fine. I, I want him. I don't think that's where that came from. You know, right. I think she she was just saying in general that she thought he was fine. Well, let's get to it, man. Kwame, um, stuck on Chelsea. What the hell was wrong with this dude, man? I mean, she didn't want you. Chelsea's all in with you. Um, and I like how Chelsea kind of told Micah from the get-go, Oh, man, yeah, no, we got it in. I'm wrecked. <laughs> she likes taking her claim like, yo. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand why these couples, every every season, they do this. Get together and talk about who's having sex. Right. Why does it matter? And then when you do, oh, I am so sore. <laughs> like, what are you really telling? Because I, I think it's messy. Like, guys, we don't do that because we're worried about what? Mm-hmm. Our guy trying to steal our girl. Right. And I'm like, do women not have that same concern? If you're talking about how good your man is in bed and well endowed and all that stuff, it's not going to make some of those women be like, hmm, I want to try. I want to see for myself. Right. You know, but I think Kwame was was dead wrong. And so I get that you have these emotional connections that happen in the pot. Mm-hmm. She ended it with you. So sometimes in life, you don't get closure and you got to move on. I've had people break up with me and I still have no idea what I did wrong, but mm. I don't need closure. I'm just thankful for the person I'm with now. And that's all mm. that matters. Yep. Kwame should be thankful for who he's with. Exactly. And that's it. You shouldn't even talk to Micah. For what? What are you going to get out of that? It's just messy. And he's lucky that Chelsea didn't like storm off that day. 
Oh, yeah, earlier, because think about it. Micah's purposely touching him, constantly touching him, right? Then, to, then the mean girl whole thing um, gets right into it. And, of, of course, you know, um, you see, uh, when Chelsea asks Kwame to get something for her, what does um, Irina do? She tries to do the same thing. Kwame does the right thing and goes, no, get it your goddamn self. Um, you're not my girl, right? But then but he did it because he was salty. Yeah, he. Well, kind of, yeah, he did, and, and he did because he was salty. He did because he goes back and does all this stuff anyway. Still, to the point that when, and they purposely they knew what they were doing. The mean girls knew what they were doing. They come flirting with him, and he allows them to distract him from his woman. Right, right, and spent way too much time talking to Micah. And Micah knows what she's doing. This is how messy she is. Mm -hmm. A, y'all shouldn't be sitting that close because Micah, your fiance, is mm -hmm. there too. Yes. And then all that touching and all that, I'd be pissed. Oh, yeah, holding I, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be cool with all that at all. Nope. The way Kwame is looking at her, I'm and like, dude, in. she rejected you. Yes. Move on. He was leading in like, I was, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I cringe watching that. I kind of got up from from watching for a couple of times to walk away. Like this, this jackass is about to kiss her. He's an idiot. He's an idiot. He's an idiot. Yeah. And, yeah. and he kept. I mean, oh my god, I had a hard time watching it, man. I mean, he's letting her touch his face, grab him by the chin. He's yep. holding her hand, leaning in. <sighs> Chelsea and had every right to be mad and was right to leave. She did, and I love how she called him out on it. Mm -hmm. and held him accountable. It's like, no, you don't need all that. You could have just said, okay, hey, that wasn't cool. You made that joke. Done. And let's move on. Exactly. But the fact that you're still having this emotional thing, did you get the closure you need? Well, not really. Seriously? What exactly. more do you need? What more do you want from her? Yeah. What more do you need from her? So I'm like, Kwame, don't mess up a good thing over <sighs> Micah. You if the roles were reversed, he would have flipped tables. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, he, he you know, even when he says this is where um, this is where I, you know I, this is where I need to be. No, no, no. This is where you change that and go. It's not only where I need to be. It's where I want to be. I want to be with you. She could, if she wasn't a strong enough woman, she could have taken that and run a completely different way. So you got to say, like you said, kudos to um, to Chelsea on that. I will say this though: Chelsea should never trust uh, Jackie and Tiffany ever again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because they sat there with her at that pool and said, if it were me, I would have gone over there and snatched his ass up already, right? Then and she wants to leave and they're like, no, don't leave. But then because Chelsea and Kwame don't show up to that dinner first at the bar or whatever it is, that little night out um, get together, I just didn't like how they were two-faced talking mm -hmm. about Chelsea with Micah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I thought that was just like, come on, come on, girls, what are you doing? It's just ladies being messy. Yeah. They do that kind of stuff. Um, it's, they were it's disrespectful. Whatever. Laughing about it in Micah's face. I lost respect for those two women in, in that moment. I'm just like, come on. Yeah. Well, hopefully Kwame understands and is going to focus his energy mm. on Chelsea, which they had a nice date the next day with the, the Mayan ritual that they did. And so I, I think they came, they overcame it. And then when they had the other dinner, when it rained, I think they're in a good spot now. So he just needs to maintain and focus on Chelsea because I think Chelsea's a great match for him, but he has to let the Micah that, let that go. Indeed. You know, the other messy situation out there, Paul um, and Zach and Irina and uh, Micah, right? Mm -hmm. When Paul and Zach are talking, it sounds like um, Irina and Zach messed around when the cameras weren't there or he's lying. Kind of think he's he said they kissed, but he didn't really go into detail of what that was. That could have been just a, and that was about it. Yeah, she it could definitely have been a kiss. Yeah. doesn't like being touched by him. <laughs> mm -hmm. At all. And Irina is into Paul. Yes. She is smitten by Paul. Just, you know, so attracted him. And I'm like, Paul, you don't see what she's doing. And her and Micah mm -hmm. are friends. And so I, I can't wait to see what comes out of this when the two mean girls are going after the same dude. Yeah, because you know what's going to happen. What, here's the thing I liked about what came out of that. Because Irina is there having a conversation with Paul, flirting, flirting. And Paul is flirting back with her, too. Well, Zach is very observant, like you said. And he sees this, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, he has a, a serious conversation with, with um, Irina later. 
um, Zach does. And in the middle of the conversation, of course, she decides to put a pillow over her head because she's just disrespectful as hell. Right. Um, but I love how he put it out there. He's like, you know, let's not even continue this facade. You know what? If this is where it's going to be, let's leave it here. Um, and he said he's not going to chase after her because you're either in it or you're not. Right. Yeah. The fact that she can't even have real conversation mm-hmm. like that uh, says a lot about her and her immaturity. Um, I love how they say business owner. I'm like, okay, what does that mean? Right. And what business does she own? Is it if it's Mary Kay? Okay, let's dial that back a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, or <laughs> is it anything more? Yeah. But it seemed like she was she was finally able to have real conversation when they were in the bed and decided to end it. And mm-hmm. then they can just say, yeah, this is crazy. This has been horrible for both yeah. of us. Now they're yeah. finally, she's finally honest being able to have a conversation. I'm like, why can't you have done that <laughs> before? Yo, I love his, um, I, I, I love it because, you know, but she's, because what she do, she suggests that they not sit next to each other on the flight home. And he's like, you know what? Yep. I think you're yeah. right. Um, we should call it. It's not going to work out. And he just, because she says that and he's like, yeah, we're not going to do this. No, we're just going to end this right here, right now. Um, and she even says, she knows she's treated him like shit, but she right. doesn't even care. No, doesn't care one bit. And I'm like, hmm. This is why you struggle out there in the dating world, because who wants to? And I wonder, like, does when you look at these shows, what are these people's dating lives like mm-hmm. after this show? Because, like, what guy is going to like, you know what? She got a raw deal on this show. I, I would give her a shot. Like, what guy is going to want her? There are a couple who will do it. I'm sure. I, I, I'm sure. I do like how the fact that she was like, because she had the nerve to say, well, at least we tried. And he goes. Yeah, I don't know how much you tried. <laughs> no, you didn't. It was absolutely horrible sleeping in this bed with you. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I loved his honesty, and um, I, I thought right on to call her out, because that's on record. It's on TV, so we can yeah. all see it. And mm-hmm. that's what we, she needed to be told. Um, and then she's like, so what about Bliss? Yeah, I hope that you go find her. <laughs> I like it. Honestly, I've been thinking about her the whole time I was with you. Yeah, and she's been thinking about Paul the whole time. That oh, yeah, she's she threw that one out. Yeah, yeah. Didn't she? Yeah. Now, see, if I'm Zach, I'm on the plane, and on the way out, I'm like, all right, well, good luck. Hopefully, you get the fuck Paul. <laughs> I'd be like, Michael, watch your back, girl. You got some competition coming. <laughs> I would drop the bomb on the way out. He's too nice. But that's what I would have done. I, there's no way I'd leave that alone and just be like, because she tried to be messy about that, thinking that she's going to hurt his feelings in yeah. that space of like, oh, well, yeah, Paul. And she's like, no, I saw that. I, I watched right. you too. I, I can get it out there. Um, the, the, the thing that um, with, you look at um, Jackie and Marshall, they obviously got it in. And they were the third couple to get it in because the second to get it in was Tiffany and Brett. And mm-hmm. apparently... Sex um, after the pods is off the chain because the three couples that had sex, the women couldn't help but talk about the throbbing, thriving, and how amazing it was. Yeah, which is just messy. I don't agree with any part of that. Uh, you don't. You don't need to talk about that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what did you think of the conversation with Chelsea uh, at that nighttime get together, Chelsea and, and Micah? They didn't really get a chance to get into it, so I, I, there's nothing there. Mm-hmm. You know, it just it started and then the storm came down and they didn't really get a chance to get into it for Chelsea to really tell Micah what she thinks about her until her she back off. So there's there's nothing. I think Chelsea would handle that in a way that she would say it, but it wouldn't be in this like let's fight about it. So there's nothing much there. They didn't have the conversation. They just started to talk and then the rain came. Yeah, I, I didn't think it needed to be a long convo. Apparently, God didn't either. And that's why he sent that torrential downpour <laughs> yeah. on the heads like boom. And with that, I will yeah. say this, though. Because Bliss has been brought up before, and um, even uh, Paul brought it up again, right? Mm -hmm. And I respect Zach for saying that Bliss deserves someone who chooses her um, when he asked about the chance to explore it. But of course, the um, producers are like, we're going to make this happen. And Mm -hmm. how do we end the episode? Bliss walks into a a restaurant that um, Zach is sitting in with his full suit on. He's got to be all G'd up, ready for this, and says, I made the wrong choice you know it and i do too Mm-hmm. well now we gotta see what happens if bliss is willing to give him a shot because if it were me i'd be like no you didn't choose me for a reason 
So just because that didn't work out, now you're going to come to me. I'm not your number two. Uh, I'm going to be your number one. And so I wouldn't go back with somebody who, even if someone from my past that I, I really liked that didn't like me for whatever reason, but then years later, they're like, you know, Terrell, I've always thought about you. I'm like, yeah, no, I wasn't good for you then. I'm not going to mm-hmm. be good for you now. So kick rocks. What, what was that couple's name? Uh, oh, my God. It was the 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 black couple, Jarrett and Ayana. Remember, mm-hmm. uh, that was season two, and Jarrett was going to pick, um, what was her name? Uh, he was going to pick Mallory. Mm-hmm. Mallory said no to him, and so he bawled his eyes out that he went back and picked Ayana, who yep. was not his first choice. That didn't work out well. Here nope. we are two seasons later. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here. Um, but let's go ahead and make some predictions. Um, we, I mean, I think we already know one of the answers, but let's just go through them anyway. Tiffany and Brett. Make it or not make it? Make it. So you say make it, I say make it, so that's a yes for both of us, right? Mm -hmm. All right. What about Micah and Paul? Not going to make it. Yeah, I don't think so either. Um, I don't see that happening. Jackie and Marshall? Right now, I'm going to say make it. You're going to say make it? Right now, I'm going to say make it. I got to see some more, but right now, I'm going to say make it. Okay, so I actually, you know, it's crazy. I thought you and I were on the same page, so I actually put down no times two. No, so I say no, you say yes. I just don't see it happening. I mean, do I think he's the right person for her? Um, yeah, but there's there's something there that's going to c- come up with him. Right. And I just that's- don't know how long she's going to hang on when his shit comes up. Because she yeah. doesn't look like the kind of person that's going to stick around because he's not her normal type. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I need I need to see more. I can't. Right now, I say make it. Chelsea and Kwame. I'm going to say not make it only because of Kwame. Ah, okay, okay. I'm going to say yes. I'll say yes because, um, one, he wants him a white woman. He's got one who's strong, who's into him. He's got to be careful, though. She gave him a little leash in the beginning, but I like the fact that she kind of gave, she came back at the back end of, of him acting the ass and said, mm-hmm. hey, this is not acceptable. Mm-hmm. I'm not the one to fuck around with. Don't do that shit no more. Right. <laughs> not exactly her words, but I'm, I'm you know. I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. We disagree on these two, but we'll see. I think they have all the potential. I just think Kwame is going to mess it up. I'm just going to say these two just because they were actually there. Um, Irina and um, Zach, we know they're not going to make it. So I'm just going to put, nope, we're not even going to worry about that. Then, of course, we're going to go to Bliss and Zach. What do you think? Uh, I'm going to say no. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen either. Um, Yeah. Why not? Because Bliss is going to be like, I was your number two. Mm Mm-hmm. No, I think Bliss will realize that you don't want to be with a guy like that. She tried to warn him about Irina. He didn't want to listen. And she even said, this would make me question your judgment. Mm-hmm. So everything that she thought would happen, happened. Yes. So why would she give him a chance now? I wonder if she gives him a chance just to be on the show for a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, I don't see them making it long term at all. Mm-mm. I'm Mm-mm. right there with you. Mm-mm. It's going to be interesting, man. I think, I think you know, the previews next Friday, the next set of episodes come out. So you have, you know, of course, the next couple of days to, to relish in this. Have your thoughts. Please comment below. Let us know what you think. Anything that we miss, bring it up. Let's, let, let's talk about it. And if you watch it, please click the like button and make sure if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe and hit Definitely. the bell for notifications. When Friday comes around, you'll have a couple of days to watch the next four episodes because then next Monday... Are we going to go live next Monday and, and, yes. and, do, and do this live? So next Monday, we're going to go live. What time do you want to go? Eight, uh, seven central? Seven central. Yep. Uh, eight, Eastern, seven central. You see, yeah. those on the Eastern, and you automatically say eight, then seven central for you backwards people. Okay. <laughs> you, you live in Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. Y'all aren't backwards I'm, there. Y'all I'm awesome. just I'm just I'm just going by the TV rules. Yeah. You know they, they've never said eight Eastern, seven Central. They've always gone eight, seven Central. Okay. Seven Central <laughs> is when we're gonna go live. Uh, oh, you hate when I'm right. It's whatever. 
Don't forget, Wednesday we're back. Married at First Sight. Um, this is what, season 16, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Nashville. And then, of course, Friday back for Ready to Love. Um, this is season seven, rolling up to near the end, I almost believe. And then, again, next Monday, episode 128 will be Love is Blind, season four, episodes six, seven, eight, and nine recap. We're going to do that on the live stream so that we get your comments as we do this as well. Mm-hmm. Um, now that we've gotten through the first five. So looking forward to it, man. It's going to be a great time. Me too. Me too. I'm looking forward to the live live version. Yeah, see, look at you. You're loving all this. All these yeah, reality shows. You love it. Whatever. <laughs> I'm Yanni Root. And I'm just Terrell. Make sure you follow us at Yanni Root, at just Terrell, and at RGRT Pod. Yeah, send us some of your random thoughts and some of the bullshit you find on the internet. We'll talk about it on the regular show. It's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.